You have been known as an innovative programmer. You're somebody who makes a specialty out of uh, pairing classical composers with modern composers. But you originally made your name back in the 1990s with the uh, Tchaikovsky competition and that violin concerto of Tchaikovsky when you were very young. And this is the first time you've actually uh, laid it down on recording. Yes. So this is kind of a return to your roots for you. Why did you decide to do that now? I mean, it's interesting. I... Tchaikovsky, um, I think, and Bach were are the two composers that I really loved as a child, and I felt that I connected to their music um, as a kid. And now, as an adult, most of the music that I liked when I was younger, I don't like now. And um, and but those are two composers that have really stayed with me for for decades. Um, and for me, it, it just felt very natural because I'm recording this with the Odense Symphony and Alexander Vidernikov. And um, Alexander, um, I, I met both the Odense Symphony and also Alexander in the same year when I was 15 years old. And um, so they, they were musical partners before I even started my career. And it kind of came full circle. The opportunity, I, I went back to the Odense Symphony a couple years ago, um, and then I worked with Alexander for the first time again just a couple years ago, and the, the only the second time of playing Tchaikovsky Concerto together was a couple years ago uh, with NHK Symphony in Tokyo, and it was amazing to see how much we've changed as not only human beings but as musicians, and yet there was still a very strong connection musically, which is something that was there um, when we first worked together. And I was just, you know, this this little kid of 15, um, and he was very kind to me also, <laughs> which I appreciate now, <laughs> looking back at that time. You say that you've changed so much in that time period, 20 plus years, uh, however many years it is. Uh, how has your approach to playing Tchaikovsky changed since uh, back in the day? I mean, I really hope I haven't, it, it hasn't gotten worse because I feel like that would be really um, bad. Um, I highly doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> but, um, but I've, I mean, I think my view of, of Tchaikovsky has changed a lot. Um, and for me, everything is about expressivity, if that makes sense. Um, it's um, it's become mo much more vocal for me. Um, I think my interpretation has become much more vocal, and I don't mean that in terms of beauty of sound because that's it's very different from what I'm I'm kind of my approaches, I think, and um, and I think it's just the the expressive meaning of, of even the technically challenging pieces. Um, so I think that's changed a lot. I think probably when I was younger, it was more about, oh, this is really exciting that this huge run is coming up. Um, and it was more about the contrast. Well, maybe it's still about the contrast between uh, lyricism and... No, no, it's not. I, I, I think I see everything as, as meaningful for expression, that every, mm -hmm. every note uh, written in this, I believe in this CD, is about finding expression. Do you think that your work with contemporary music and with living composers has in any way influenced how you approach these classical composers like Tchaikovsky? Has it given you any insight into how to make your performances maybe a little bit more fresh and contemporary sounding? Um, I don't know. It's interesting because I, I really do approach every piece in the same way in the sense that um, it's really a process of um, coming to an understanding of that composer's vision and voice and world, um, sound world, musical language uh, kind of world. And um, so in that sense, I really approach everything in the same way. Um, I think each composer is very unique, um, but it's really about um, having that composer's 
language and, and music becoming like one and the same as myself. Um, and that's the process I love as a performer. Now, let me ask you this, and this is just a hypothetical, but you've paired the uh, violin music of Bach and Beethoven with living composers like uh, Kaya Sariaho and Andrew Norman, etc. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be a musical matchmaker for Tchaikovsky, do any modern composers come to mind for you that you would like to kind of pair up with Tchaikovsky's music? Oh, that's interesting. I never even thought about that. Um, I don't know. You might have launched a new idea, though, for me. <laughs> <laughs> you might see something come out in like six years, and it'll be all due to you. <laughs> yeah, well, that's okay. You can put my name in the fine print Okay. somewhere down there. I mean, I think for me, uh, you know, I grew up in a time when everybody was saying classical music is dead or it's dying. And I feel like I had to figure out a way to come to an understanding of why this music was so um, compelling and, you know, mm. essentially I've dedicated my entire life to it. Um, so why it's such a necessary part of my life. Um, and I think a huge part of that is putting music in context. Um, and I think the great thing about classical music is there's this very long tradition, musical tradition. Um, and so when contemporary composers write, it's not like they're just pulling stuff from nowhere. It's always in conversation with the past. And I mm -hmm. feel that, and I truly believe that um, the one thing that cre that creates a thread to the past and to Beethoven, um, because we're we're living today in the 21st century, we're living in a t completely different society, a completely different um, time period and 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 cultural world than Bach or Beethoven or even Tchaikovsky, and yet, of course, throughout throughout time, human beings I think are essentially the same. Um, but contemporary music really creates that thread to the past. Um, and so for me, pro, you know, in terms of programming recitals, uh, it's, it's oftentimes very important to me to, um, to kind of go on this journey with, with my audience. Do you want to talk about uh, one of the other pieces in particular, aside from the uh, violin concerto? I love Serenade Melancolique and Meditation. Um, uh, no, I love the whole CD. What am I talking about? I love Melody <laughs> also. Um, you can pick favorites, huh? Yeah, uh, it's really hard. I really do love every single piece that's on the CD. Well, that Melancholy Serenade is so interesting, coming as like his first piece for yes. violin and orchestra. And, and yet it, there's so much in there. It's, it has all these mood shifts. It's so subtle. Yeah. Um, and it's so, like, profoundly human. I think that's what I love about the short pieces. Each one is so profoundly human in the sense that um, it just speaks to the essence of who we are and, and different sides of who we are. But he's so true in that way. And it, I just, I think that's what really draws me to his music. Well, uh, this music of Tchaikovsky and working with uh, this symphony and this conductor take you back to your youth, of course. And I'm curious, uh, you grew up near Chicago. Did you come from a musical family, or how did you get started with the violin? Um, I didn't come from a music fam musical family. Uh, my mom was a refugee from North Korea. Okay. Um, so, And my parents were both children uh, during the course of the Korean Civil War, which we know as the Korean War. Um, and I think, I mean, she came to the U.S., I think in the 60s, with $50 in her pocket. She worked as a nanny, and then she got her Ph.D. in three years. Um, mm. So she was, I think when she had me, she just wanted me to have everything that she didn't have. And music just happened to be one of those things. Um, I mean, she, she also 
started me in ballet lessons and I was terrible at these things mm -hmm. like ballet, ice skating, diving, gymnastics, rhythmic gymnastics, all those things I was horrible at. Um, I did love swimming. So I was in swim team um, and I loved reading. So now I'm realizing everything I liked was very solitary <laughs> and music. I mean, in terms of practicing and things like that. So I think she just wanted me to start in music. Um, so she took me to the local music school and the only opening was violin. So I, that's the reason I play the violin. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Lucky for the violin. I guess so. I think I was really fortunate. I had an incredible uh, first violin teacher, jo Mrs. Davis, uh, Joe Davis, and um, she really guided me and guided my parents. And um, I think when I was eight years old, well, I guess when I was seven years old, she started telling my parents she had taught me everything that she felt that she could. And she researched all these different teachers in the Chicago area. And at the time, they told me my parents didn't want to drive me. So for a year, she drove me to my lessons because the new teacher was an hour away. And um, Mrs. Davis took me to every single lesson and practiced with me in the week. But this is a funny story because um, just last year, uh, I was having dinner with, with Mrs. Davis and her husband, Mr. Davis. And um, and it was literally like 30 years later, and maybe she made a promise to herself. And she told me, actually, Jenny, that story is not true. We just, and she told me the new teachers didn't want to take you on. And I made a promise to them that I would make sure that you would, you would be prepared and that, and she was like, that's why I drove you to your lessons every week for a year. And that's why I practiced with you. And she said, but I didn't want you to feel less uh, when you started with them. So I, she, she literally never told told me that. Um, and maybe my parents and she had made this agreement never to say that to me. I have no idea. But literally, she only told me told me this uh, maybe last year. Wow. How did you feel about that? I mean, at this point, I didn't care. <laughs> but I could see like how if I was eight years old and they were like, you're not good enough, that how that probably could have affected me a great deal. Yeah. So yeah. I'm very grateful to her. Um, but it's I feel like literally she made this promise. I'm going to wait 25 years. She, I could totally see her saying like 25 years ago, I'm going to wait literally 25 years before I ever tell Jenny this. Well, it's great that you had such a, a wonderful support system. She's amazing. Yeah, she's amazing. Violinist Jennifer Coe, who uh, joined us today from Dubway Studios out in New York. Her latest album is The Complete Works for Violin and Orchestra of Tchaikovsky. Jennifer, thanks for joining us here today on FM 91. Thank you so much for having me.